Rose play. Welcome back. Uh, last time I was about to start talking shit about a gigantic company who could probably sue our pants right off. So, let's talk about Ubisoft. <laughs> Just joking. I mean, I'm not joking about talking about Ubisoft, but um, I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, joking. welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to be talking about Ubisoft. <laughs> Oh, that was so perfect. It's one of those things you don't realize when you're, when, like, when we, when I first asked you if you wanted to be part of the show, I didn't know what you thought it was going to be, and I didn't know what the show was going to be like, and I was worried that it was going to, that we, it wasn't going to be good synergy or something, or maybe we'd have disagreements or something, but it's been so fucking good for, I've been so happy with it too. Fuck this frog. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, those electric toads are brutal. And it's those moments where one person is so on and paying attention to the other person. Because I'll, I'll probably put that part in there, because that was hilarious. But, like, I just, I tried to start the episode and fucked up, and then without missing a beat, you're just like, Alright, welcome back, everybody! <laughs> and that's fucking hilarious. <laughs> well, Ooh. it, uh, I, actually, I feel like you can blow up that top area, too, potentially. Probably. Um, bah. Yeah, I find the most important thing is the fact that, oh, you can't get up. Oh, you no. suck. Um, the most important oh. thing is that, uh, oh, <laughs> that you don't blow it, brother! <laughs> you have to be paying attention, and, uh, well, you also have to remember that what you're saying is being recorded. That's the most important thing. Because in a normal conversation, you're worried about the other person, but, oh, good thing you grabbed that checkpoint. Yeah, I wasn't Wait. paying attention to my health. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually th totally thought you were going to be okay. Um, yeah, in a normal conversation, you're worried about the other person, but in this format, you're just worried about the conversation overall being good. It's yeah. like playing a game where you actually care about winning rather than just getting kills. You know, the difference For in sure. like how you play and how you work with others? Do you yeah. play nicely with the other children? Or are you an asshole? <laughs> I, uh... It's been weird. I had said a long time ago that I, I wanted to try to avoid fucking skeleton man. I want you to come this way because I want to bounce on your head. Um, that I didn't want to talk too much about this skeleton. <laughs> I didn't want to talk too much about other Let's Players during the Let's Play show, which is why I like the, the podcast because I can talk all day about Game Grumps and Markiplier. But I didn't really want to talk about them while we're doing the show just because it's the same type of show as them. Yeah, well, in a way, it's almost like we're trying to feed off their fame. That's how it felt. Yeah, like I was like we're sourcing from someone else in the exact same genre. And it's, it's like if we're it's like if in the podcast we just nonstop talk about Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah, but we can talk about it here. <laughs> that <was pretty laughs> That's why we started both of these is so that we wouldn't get sued by either. Yes, of course. Well, we're not um, in your industry, so it's okay. <laughs> I just want to take a moment. I'm not usually into, like, number stuff, but we're at 69.69, and I think that's pretty impressive. For gold? Oh, nice, nice. I actually can't see the first digit, so I've, I've had no oh. idea how you've afforded these things. <laughs> um, well, I think we've probably got, like, tangent off tangent, but um, the show's been good. That's, that's, that's the main point. I'm really happy with the way it's going. And then... Oh, yes, the Game Grumps thing. Since doing... I, I do my own show and then we do a show together, so I do I watch and participate in a lot of Let's Plays on my own. And since doing that, I've become very critical of, of, of our shows. And as a result, I've become extremely critical of other Let's Players. Like, I'm, I'm watching PewDiePie or, or Game Grumps, and I'm listening to everything they say with the same type of uh, critique that I do on our own show. And it's almost like I've actually started to enjoy them less because I, I do so, because we, we do so much of our own Let's Play stuff. It's been a very, very interesting uh, progression through the, as the show moves forward. That's interesting, because I find that happens with a lot of stuff. Like when you, uh, you watch a movie as a kid or play a game as a kid. And by the way, that lightning scene was fantastic. Can we just even go back and take a second? That was yeah. so interesting and cool. Not too hard, but oh, that yeah. was so well done. Yeah, I, everything about this game. It, it makes me want to write something about it. But uh, they do that a lot in this too. Like they, that does not stop, and it gets way harder. That was really <laughs> like, funny too. 
It's like moving platforms uh, while they're doing that. Nice. Oh, nice. wow, very nice. Yeah, just on that note of, of uh, I guess, taking a more scientific or more in-depth... Yeah, you can bounce on those gravestones. I don't think you can swim, though. <laughs> I just, I had to try it. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what water does. <laughs> uh, so taking a more scientific approach to things, I find actually ruins certain things, like movies that seemed awesome. Or I remember we played this game, Draken, back in the day. It seemed so mm. great. But now it just looks horrible when you see, like, <laughs> modern graphics and, and, I guess, realistic yeah, rendering. Yeah, sure. But I've noticed it with everything. So I went back and I watched, I'm watching Friends, which... Uh, it, I mean, I'm sure most people know what Friends is, but I was watching a scene from the second season and I was actually blown away by how it was filmed because they were doing a wedding reception. And there's obviously, I don't know, eight to ten characters that you recognize instantly because they're like main, main characters. And you were actually able to see people in the background just like conversing and talking and hugging and stuff during every scene. Yeah, they actually kind of incorporated the entire party as if it was happening. I can't remember what it was. I think it might have been a Marvel show. Shit. <laughs> I don't um, think you're getting that gold back. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, oh, I lost so much. Oh. Um, I think it was Mar Daredevil. I think it was Daredevil. But they had this part where there's an extra walking down the street, and then when the shot changes. Uh, yeah, when the shot changes, he's there again, but in the exact same spot, and he's not even, like, he's not even a character, he's just there. And it was like, holy fuck, that is impressive, because that takes a lot of work and passion to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Yeah, because it seems so insignificant, but, uh, you know, you're only watching two hours of content. Yeah. Well, I watched, um, uh, I watched The Matrix again. Well, yeah. I guess I only watched the second and the third Matrix again. But I had originally watched them as children, so everything in my mind was, oh, well, they told me this is where they want to go, so this is where they want to go. But now that I watch it, I realize The Matrix is actually an amazing story. Oh, yeah. So if I, if I can paraphrase it in, like, two, two sentences, and anyone who hasn't, I'm sorry, if you haven't seen The Matrix, you missed the boat. It was, like, ten years ago for spoilers. At least. <laughs> yeah, so Neo gets released from the Matrix, becomes the one, and destroys Smith, and in the process, frees Smith from the regular, I guess, administrative rights, if you will, of programs. <laughs> so... He basically, like, the, the program also got the... Fucking shit. Got the ability to... Uh, no, fuck, I'm, I'm, I'm squashing your perfect analogy. Continue. So then, now that he's unbound, he's able to essentially infect other programs, and even people. And that's why you see Bane enters the real world as Smith. I literally never got that connection as a kid. I was like, ah, I'm just gonna believe him. Because, like, it was <laughs> obvious he was Smith, right? But it, they, I just didn't understand it. So he is able to enter both worlds and infect other things. And the only way Neo is able to actually defeat him is by allowing him to assimilate Neo, and then essentially killing himself. Yeah, he essentially, which, he ducked Which makes reason. sense, yeah, it, it really does make sense. It's not like, uh, you know, Neo just, like, pulls out all the stops and is just, like, this unstoppable dude and just wins. Yeah. No, he just, he outsmarts him. Yeah, I love it. It's a phenomenal tale. If anyone here hasn't seen The Matrix, I, I highly advise all three of them. They are uh, very well choreographed, and uh, yeah. the visual effects in the second one are not amazing but i think it was done in maybe 2000 something mm. I, Early I, believe, 2000s. I believe that you that really uh practical effects are some of the best uh set uh, ways to go with movies because it doesn't feel where am i supposed to go here oh shit what's going on here i'm right, supposed to do something see. though whack that thing what is oh that? okay okay oh, i get it dude yep better run this over here Got it, got it, got it, get it, got it, get it, cheap, but it. There we go. There we go. Um, practical effects in the new Star Wars are fantastic. Except for that weird alien with the big frog face. That that looked like shit. <laughs> so what do you mean by practical effects? Uh, so 
the original Star Wars movies were done in practical effects. Like, instead of uh, a computer-generated... Um, shit? Instead of computer generating the like the tie fighters or something it's miniatures and like trick photography same with uh planets and things like that yeah yeah and then backgrounds and stuff weren't even cgi'd in the originals they were uh, artists drew those which mm -hmm. is fucking cool i did actually know that uh, i just recently saw that on imgur and somebody posted a bunch of the the original artwork and it's just like a gigantic painting well, as much as I completely agree with you that doing a practical effect, as much as it may be more expensive, will add that expense to the movie. But the only thing I realized yesterday is I was watching uh, I Know That Voice, which mm. I'm sure we've mentioned it before, but I Know That Voice is a uh, documentary made about uh, the community of voice acting. It's produced by John DiMaggio. Uh, you should definitely check that one out. I've watched it twice. Mitchell's watched it three times, maybe four times. Uh, so, twice, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> so that's a. Uh, I actually forgot where where I was going with that one. But I just I just want to quickly say to people who don't know who John DiMaggio is, he plays Bender on Futurama. He plays uh, Adventure Time. What's the name of the uh, the dog? The oh yeah, he plays the dog on Ven I believe so. I'm gonna yeah, he does. I don't know the name though. Oh okay. Um, and then he also plays. What the fuck am I supposed to go? Uh, he also plays um. Marcus Phoenix on Gears of War. Oh yeah, he's phenomenal as Marcus. What I the actually. What am I supposed to do? I have no idea. Oh, can you go any higher? Maybe try and bounce off him. Off. Oh. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right then. Oh, there's a secret. secret. Hello. <laughs> this guy's like. Uh, I'm sure this is like a commentary on like government officials. Yeah. They're scary at first, and then suddenly they're like, no, nope, no, I'm not working today. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, so oh, watching this of... documentary, I, I... What? No, I was just going to say, speaking of government officials, but go on. Oh. Well, so watching this documentary, I, I almost came to the realization that... So an actor can play, I don't know, a handful of roles. I mean, the most roles I've ever seen an actor play, at least well is uh, like 13, 14, 15 roles, which would be like Leo, Denzel, like those type of really high profile actors. Yeah. But a voice actor can play like 150 to 200 people as long as they're in the business long enough and they have the range. Yep, and so they I... are encouraged to play multiple parts in the same production. Yeah, well, first of all, you get paid more. Yeah. Second of all, it's that many less people and less studio bookings that need to be done. Because then well, they can get you in, especially if it's like The Simpsons or Family Guy, where they need just a, like a, a side character that does that's not really important to the plot. And if someone who can play like Seth MacFarlane plays a lot of characters on Family Guy, oh, including seriously? including a lot of the, the like the little people like like a convenience store or clerk or something. And that's just I mean that's for two reasons I guess. One, it allows him to just sort of create those characters with ease as he wants, but also Imagine how much easier that is. And I don't cheaper. mean to interrupt you here, but Inspector Knight. Oh I my god, like... is this the boss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or did you want to hold this? Because we're pretty we're pretty late in the episode. You want to just hold this for the next one? Yeah, that sounds good. All right, next time on. Uh... No, Birthday? yeah, no. Is it yes, but that's not our sign off. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Oh, that too. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, we will hopefully beat Spectre Knight. Although, with our track record, we'll see. Yeah.